hey girl hey welcome back to my channel it's your girl misha thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review we are back with the math smiths it is wednesday slash thursday morning so y'all already know what time it is honey it's married at first sight time if you are new here then welcome i give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail if you're back for a second or third time then welcome back y'all please don't hesitate to like comment and subscribe to the channel share this with a friend share it on red it, share it on Facebook, share it on the Instagram, share it on the Googler, honey, just share it. <laughs> okay. Now, child, let's get into it. If we gonna get into it, let me just say this before we start off. Baby, this episode was a fool. When I tell you I was invested in this episode, okay, it gave what needed to be gave. Alyssa, I'ma gather you and get you all the way together. You and your gold boots. Okay? Because it ain't no reason for you to be acting the way you acted. Now let's get into it. When the episode first opens up, it's wedding day. Noi and Steve. So Steve is standing there, fresh cut, waiting for his bride to be. And then Noi and her dad, they're in the back and it's time. Will everyone please stand? So she was like, you know, I believe in love at first sight. I'm nervous, but I'm ready. I've literally crossed the oceans and the seas. I will cross the ocean for you. Shout out to Monica. Honey, she been crossing to a 90 day fiance and whatnot. So she is ready to be a bride. So she said that she believes in love at first sight and she comes out and she just lit up and so did Steve. I said, okay, Steve, with the enthusiasm and whatnot. You know, Steve got a lot of enthusiasm and whatnot because he don't have to work in the AM. <laughs> Baby, Steve ain't got no particular place to go. Do y'all hear me? Honey, and in true Boston fashion, they start talking a little bit. You know, hey, how are you? Oh, you look beautiful. You look nice as well. Okay, let's continue. So the officiant reads about Noi, and the family says that she has an alter ego named Noisy, and she wears wigs. Not the wig disclaimer. <laughs> Not y'all got to tell Steve about the wigs, but they really do, because wigs take up a lot of space. And if you have a mannequin head, then you definitely going to need a place to lay that wig down. So Steve, therefore, and thus and such, I'm speaking directly to you, sir. You're going to need a home outside of that shared apartment because when that lease is up, they want you out, okay? So they talk about her wigs and whatnot and then he reads Steve's and he has nine nieces and nine nephews so they hope that she's prepared for a big family and hope that she loves kids. So they said he takes a lot of trips and he likes adventures. So keep your mind open. Uh-huh, girl, they're trying to tell you on the slick to get ready for van life, but that's just me. Moving forward. So they read their vows, right? Hers were really beautiful. She starts to get really teary-eyed while she's reading them. And then Steve reads his, and they were really special as well. So then they exchange rings, right? And I'm like, oh, okay, getting ready to exchange rings. I now pronounce you husband and Noi, okay? But he has a little something up his sleeve or in his pocket. So he pulls out this spare ring, and he said he pulled it out, and he got it for her just in case she didn't like the first one. Why was it a ring pop, y'all? <laughs> I said not a ring pop now don't get me wrong back in grade school i loved a good ring pop honey well i guess you got to get what you can afford okay moving forward so he said by the power invested in me by the state of whatever state i now pronounce you husband and wife so they look really nice together and i'm like okay steve steve is growing on me like i still want him to work but i also want them to work out moving forward so they go over there by the proverbial wedding tree to pop some champagne. And he said that he's attracted to her and she's really beautiful. And they're actually having a very genuine conversation. It just flows. Like it's very organic. I was like, oh, okay, so this is really good. And I love the way that they look together. They are so cute together. Okay, I'm not getting wrapped up. Y'all don't try to suck me in. I'm not getting wrapped up. Let me get into the honeymoons. Let's get almost on the plane back to the shared apartment. And then I will make my assessment. Because, you know, I'm feeling some feels in this episode. And I don't like it. I don't like it at all. So she was like, you know, I was very nervous, but I'm feeling very calm after meeting him. Well, child, wait till you find out he ain't got no job, honey. <laughs> That's neither here nor there. So Noy says, you know, he's so sweet and funny. And at first I thought it was going to be two diamond rings that he was giving me. But then I realized it was a ring pop. And I was like, oh, my God, like I like him even more now. Uh-huh. It's all fun and games till y'all hungry. Okay. Because Steve ain't got no job. And now you got to eat that ring pop for dinner. I'm just saying moving forward only one couple left to wed and that is Alyssa and Chris baby this about to be a fool do y'all hear me so Alyssa 
and her girls they come in to wake her up and they do this one two three i hope he's hot that's all they care about like the Kardashian clan gonna be on my nerves all the way up and through this episode. They all talk with that fried vocal cord. Oh, and then I hope he's hot because if he's not hot, then it's gonna be a not. And if it's a not, then it's a why not? Like it was really getting on my nerves. I'm like, okay, girl, please clear your throat, honey, and enunciate your words. Child, this is getting on my nerves. So they come in, they wake her up and whatnot. Child should have left her sleep if she was gonna behave this way. So they wake her up and Chris is in the other room. He's feeling great. He's like, you know what? I'm really going to trust the process. Every time, you know what? On Married at First Sight, saying trust the process is almost as bad as getting a tattoo of your spouse's name. When you start talking about the process, you're doomed. Let's take a trip back down memory lane. Season 12, Paige. I would like to just trust the process. Doomed. Season 13. Well, you know what? I'm just going to trust the process. Johnny, you know, we're going to work through it. Bow. Doomed. Bow, bow, bow. Boom, 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 Shout out to Bow from season 13. Honey, y'all know I had to throw it back one time. Chris, season 14. Talking about he going to trust the process. And look how that turned out. Let me tell y'all something. If y'all are going to apply and or get recruited for Married at First Sight when you get on the scene, please do not say, I am going to trust the process. Just say, I'm going to get in here and see what I was doing. <laughs> like, just say, I'm going to get in here and see what I was doing, honey. Please don't say that. So his friends are like, well, we know you're nervous. If you're nervous, just say you're nervous. He said, I am nervous, as you should be. Here go, Pastor Cal. We match them because they are both honest communicators seeking a deeper connection. We believe that Chris can give Alyssa the security she needs to thrive as a wife. And as for Chris, Alyssa's fun loving demeanor can help even out Chris's goal oriented lifestyle. I saw nothing fun about her, nothing. Okay, her demeanor was that of a, a bump on a log. It gave me nothing. So I'm trying to figure out what fun loving demeanor. I'm, I'm really trying to figure it out. Chum. So the bridesmaids are getting ready, right? Here go one of our bridesmaids. Isn't it wild that none of us were in a relationship and you're getting married today? Oh my gosh, girl. Okay. So Alyssa goes, yeah, you know, after that ex, I went on so many dates, but now one person is anything what I'm looking for because you're giving shallow ice queen. Maybe that's why. She's like, you know, I chose Married at First Sight to put into the universe what I want. She said, you know, my gut would tell me if this wasn't the right choice. Well, girl, get you some probiotics because your gut should have told you that you were not going to be attracted to Chris. Moving forward. So she's getting her makeup done, purple eyeshadow and all. And she states that she won't have too many expectations. She's just going to go with the flow. Now, remember that you said this. Meanwhile, Chris is saying his job has given him the tools to remain calm under pressure. Over on the other side, Alyssa is like, well, I hope the physical is there. You know, I have to be physically attracted to the person. She's like, you know, I'm happy to walk down the aisle and be happy with what I see. And I hope that's what happens. You're getting on my nervous system already. You have mentioned his physicality about three times since we've come in contact with you waking up. Okay, let's give it a rest. Now, don't get me wrong. You do want to be attracted to your spouse. When you go out, okay, let's just say you go to the bar, to the lounge, or to the restaurant, and whatever. Wherever you are, when a person catches your attention, that's physical, okay? Because you're looking at that person and you're saying, wow, they're attractive. Aesthetically, they're pleasing to me. So let me go and zone in on them and have a little conversation. But you, ma'am, chose to be married at first sight. Now the experts do what the experts want to do. So if you're going to trust a complete stranger to concoct you a husband with a pinch of this and a little bit of this and a little bit of that, then you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. Moving forward. So she gets a gift from Chris, right? And I was like, oh, okay, she got a gift. She was the only one that received a gift, which was a very nice touch. That shows you that Chris is a good person right there. So she starts to get a little choked up because she was reading the letter, but her friend reads the rest of the letter that Chris wrote. Chris wrote a beautifully worded letter to this spoiled brat and she's like you know I just feel like he knows me and he knows what I want to hear and it feels good so after all that this superficial heifer says all I can think of is I hope he thinks I'm cute and I hope he's cute <laughs> I just really hope that's what you took away from his letter all of those beautiful words and you took away I hope he thinks I'm cute 
and I hope I think he's cute. Okay, moving forward. In the next scene, her parents show up and she said, I decided to walk down the aisle myself because my dad can't walk too far because he had back surgery. So she puts on her cowboy boots and it's time to settle up and gone on down the aisle and get married. So girl, gone on down there and kick up some dust. So Chris meets up with his mom and she gives him a few words of wisdom. And I don't think nothing will help him prepare for this mom. I really don't. So he said, you know, he knows her family won't trust him, but he wants to prove that he's a guy that they can trust. Yo mama should be not trusting her because I definitely don't. So before Alyssa walks out again for the 500th time, she's like, you know, I hope he's tall and I hope he has like a little bit of a scruffy beard. She's like, I really hope I'm attracted to him when I see him. Oh my gosh, this is just, ugh. All Alyssa can talk about is the physical attributes. She's like, you know, teeth are very important. I have to be attracted to him. If he's snaggle tooth, then I'll just walk away. She was like, I'd be like, is there a dentist in the room? Is there a dentist in the room? We also need to know if there's a heart surgeon because you're giving 10 man because you need a heart. You're a heartless little heifer, okay? Or you may need a personality transplant after how you treated Chris this episode. Shawna made me mad, had to go off on a little rant. And y'all know how I get when I go off on my rants. So she said, you know, nothing is going to prevent me from walking down the aisle. I'm going to go see him and then I'll make my judgments and judgments you made. Moving forward. In the next scene, everybody rises, all rise, and she comes boot scoop boogieing on down the aisle in these boots, and her dad is all choked up in the audience, honey, probably happy that somebody finally taken her. Chris is complimenting her, right? Like she's like, well, did you see my shoes? Girl. So then the officiant reads what her family said about her. As soon as he reads that she's a straight shooter and has no problem saying what's on her mind, I knew then that that was code for she's rude, so be prepared. Okay, people try to, she's just blunt. Okay, that's just who she is. She's a straight shooter. Boom, boom, give it to you straight, no chaser. That's a disclaimer for she's a little bit rude. She's a little bit mouthy and some stupid stuff might come out of her mouth, but that's just who she is. There's a way to say what you mean without hurting a person. Like you don't have to hurt a person with your words and your actions. That doesn't make you a straight shooter. That makes you mean. Like, I'm just, that's just the bottom line, honey. There's no nicer way to put it. You're just mean-spirited. So they said, you'll always be able to tell if something is bothering her because her face will say it all. Well, honey is saying something right now. So his family said that he's extremely driven. He can be a workaholic. He has been searching for a woman to share his life with. And then they read their vows. Their vows didn't move me in the slightest. They put on their rings and then they pronounce them husband and Alyssa. And she actually let him kiss her. I was shocked. I was like, oh, now she let him put his lips on her. Okay, moving forward. So they walk over to a bench and they start talking a little bit. And she asks his last name and it's Colette. And then he asked her what she does. And she said, I do social media for a construction company. Girl, what kind of made up job title is that? So you run their Instagram. Girl, goodbye. <laughs> Girl, go, honey, go. So then Chris was like, well, I know it's going to come up. So let me just say it. Yeah, I play disc golf. Oh, my God. Chris, 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 Chris. Oh, my goodness. She's like, I have no idea what that is. I don't know what it is either, child. He's like, it's okay. 90% of people don't. So he goes, yeah, you know, I'm the vice president of the New England Disc Golf Association. Lordy, Chris. Chris, you and this Frisbee, please don't tell this heifer that right now. So he's going on and on about all of his accolades related to the golf and the disc golf of it all while she's staring at him blankly. I was like, oh child, this is gonna be a disaster. She said, I don't mind learning, but I don't think it's an activity that I will take up. Honey, I don't see these two even going for coffee after this is all over, do y'all hear me? Not even coffee. Y'all remember how Jacob dismissed Haley? He had that steak, baby, sat there and ate his steak ate his potato and got up from that table and Haley was like maybe we could be friends he's like nope <laughs> oh child this is a mess Katina and Elijah Juan it's time for them to take their pictures and they talked a little bit about the relationship and he was like she was like I saw you were about to cry and I thought maybe you thought I would I was cold and he was like no I was just really wondering if you liked a guy that shows their emotions and she was like no I don't have a problem with that so they talk about that and they do actually make a handsome couple. I was watching them as they were taking their pictures. I'm like, okay, y'all make a cute couple, but honey, a cute couple does not a marriage make, okay? I can attest to that. 
So Katina starts to open up a little bit and she says she actually feels blessed to have Elijah Wan. Blessed, blessed. I'm like, oh, okay, blessed in the spirit. Moving forward. She said, you know, I used to date men that were confused and wanted to date multiple women at the same time. Honey, you're actually describing Isaac, the one you're married to. She's like, you know, but with him, it just feels right. Okay. <laughs> Okay, child, I ain't got time for it. So Elijah Wan is saying that he feels blessed as well, and he's feeling really vulnerable. He's ready to dedicate himself to Katina. He's like, you know, it's a dream come true. You know, her lips are soft and juicy. I feel loyalty behind those lips. Okay, so you feel loyalty inside her DNA. Got it. Shout out to Kendrick Lamar. He said, it's like I said, you know, please let me know if I'm, I'm, I'm kissing you too much. And she said, no, it's fine. He's like, I feel like, you know, all my sins have been forgiven. I feel like they've been washed away. Elijah Wan, you weren't baptized, honey. You were only married. Baby, that man, no, he can talk. And you know what I was wondering? I wonder would he feel the same way if she wasn't so pretty? Moving forward, Alyssa and Chris. So Chris is still running down his LinkedIn profile and Alyssa is like, I think he looks like a real estate agent. Oh, oh my gosh. Meanwhile, he's like, if I had a type, which I don't, she would definitely be it. Oh, okay. So you like them empty. So it's time for them to take their pictures. So the photog is like, can you just lay your head on his chest? She said, no, I wouldn't do that. She said, no, just not even a little. She said, no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, she is not feeling Chris. She is giving me old flat face Haley, but worse. So Chris is still not seeing this red flag on Alyssa's dress. And he's like, the fact that she's open and blunt, it really, you know, makes my life easier. He's like, you know, I don't see any red flags right now. No red flags at all. Moving forward, Noi and Steve. Noi is meeting Steve's family and her mom is like he's handsome I think he's handsome baby that mom is into it do y'all hear me get into it if we gonna get into it mom <laughs> she thinks Steve is so handsome so her brother was like girl he was nervous Noi was like really was he and her brother was like of course you're a baddie why wouldn't he be I know that's right brother so Noi goes to change and she tells Steve that her family is from Laos and it's customary that they wear matching colors. So she gave him a garment to wear and they wear it for celebrations. She's like, is it okay if I put this on you? He said, yeah. She said, okay, cause I want to formally welcome you into my family. Aww. I'm really liking these two. I'm trying not to y'all. I'm trying not to get attached. I'm really not, I'm not attached. I'm not attached. I'm not gonna do it. Like they both seem so sweet and easygoing, but you know, they like to fool us, okay? We really cannot go off the weddings. So for now, I'm going to put Noi and Steve on ice. Moving forward. It's time for the receptions. Everybody about to get their party on. All five couples are now married and all the photos have been taken. Katina and Elijah Wan. They have their first dance and she's like, you know, I'm feeling all mushy and gushy inside. You know, all the things you feel when you with a man and you married. She has all the feels. She said, I feel his body too and it's rock solid. So they were dancing, right? And the sun was in her eyes. And he was like, it's okay. I'll turn. I'll put the sun in my eyes. It's okay. Okay, Elijah Wan. I guess I'll give you one point for that one. That was cute. I hope it's not all about her looks, though. Like, she's pretty. But let's get to know more about her. Noi and Steve. They look so nice together. They really do. They do their first dance as husband and wife. They were cute and awkward. Baby, I don't know what song was playing, but not a beat was caught. Do y'all hear me? I was like, what is, why are they dancing right here? They are a part of the rhythmless nation. Shout out to Janet Jackson. <laughs> Baby, they didn't catch a beat the first. I said, ooh, honey, these two right here. So they clink the glasses and they share a little kiss. On to Lindsay and Mark. They're clinking these glasses yet again for a kiss. Meanwhile, Lindsay thinks they're about to toast. She's like, what is this for a toast? Girl, kiss that man. Maybe it'll sober you up. So they're eating and she's like, are you nervous? He said, no. So she starts talking about the other brides. She was like, cause when I met the other brides at the bachelorette party, they were all saying things like, oh, I wanted a tall black guy. Oh, I want someone real muscly. Um, ma'am, don't worry about what they wanted. Worry about you. And also who asked you to repeat that? Like, I was not really comfortable with her saying they wanted a tall black guy. I don't know. Just something about it just didn't sit right with me. I didn't like it. You just worry about your request for no baby teeth. That's what you worry about. 
She's like, you know, I've seen a lot of naked bodies and I was telling them what looks good now will not look good when you're 30. Tell Mark you were for the streets without telling Mark you were for the streets. <laughs> Child, this is a mess. So Mark is like, I think she's someone that I'm going to have to pull the love out of. Like I see a little bit of it, but she has a lot of layers and a tough exterior. So she's probably been hurt a lot. So I'm going to have to pull it out of her. He said, I'm excited to see when the sun goes down, how she's going to be. Basically, I can't wait till she sober ups and sticks a fork in it. Moving forward, Elijah Wan and Katina. So they're clinking the glasses for a kiss. Child, Katina was looking like, I'm tired of kissing. Child, she gave him a little peck. <laughs> she gave him a little peck. And Katina said that she wants kids, right? So she's talking to him about it. She was like, do you want kids? He said, yeah, in the future. But I want to travel first. She said, I'm feeling like we're on the same page. I'm just so happy about everything. He wants kids during my time frame. And we want to travel. It's just the whole journey. I'm just so happy. Katina is giving me cheerleader, ditzy. Oh, my God. Like... I don't know head in the clouds type vibes I don't know what it is I mean she says she's 30 but she just reads so much younger y'all tell me if y'all agree tell me down below if you think Katina reads younger she's like do you know how to cook because my mama said I need to get me a man that knew how to cook he said you can't cook okay you're scaring me she said I can cook you know just nothing too crazy oh okay so shrimp and chicken alfredo from a jar it is child that's exactly what she telling you he's like well I don't need nothing crazy as long as it's edible he said, now she gonna have to learn to cook now because there ain't no way we gonna make it if we don't cook. We're not gonna be able to survive. <laughs> Child, this is a mess. Is she still a wife, Elijah Wan? Because she don't know how to cook. So is she still a wife? Oh, okay. Noy and Steve. They're at the table. They're eating. And she asks what he does for work. Child, this way get good. So he gives her his last employer, okay, because he ain't working that nowhere. Then he tells her he went on a four-month road trip. She said, four months? Honey, I almost choked on a salad. She said, uh, well, um, okay, well, were you going to live somewhere else or was this just a road trip just to be road tripping? Baby Noy is basically like, where do you live? <laughs> like, where do you lay your head down? He's like, no, I was just going on a road trip. You know, they did some layoffs. And so I just was trying to figure out what I wanted to do next. And then this popped up and <laughs> here I am. It just sort of happened. Nah, Steve, mm -mm, this didn't just sort of happen. You signed up for that stipend and for free room and board for eight weeks. And I already told you, you have eight weeks to find you a job and a place to stay. And you ain't fooling me. So Noah's like, um, oh, okay. So in the confessional, she said, um, I'm a little bit taken aback because Steve is currently unemployed but he looks like someone that's going to figure it out so I'm going to trust that he's going to figure it out does he? looks to me like as long as you down the ride and you got enough gas money that's what it looked like to me <laughs> child Steve ain't a bit more worried about working than the man in the moon then Noy started looking at Steve and his nice haircut real crazy after that girl you looking real worried to me he's talking about you ain't worried that face says something totally different but I thought about it y'all and maybe Steve is just lazy because he can get a job okay he has the credentials he has the experience I'm sure he has a degree he's choosing not to work so therefore in thus and such you just lazy Noy didn't know she was signing up for someone that was a part of the great resignation moving forward in the next scene, Lindsay and Mark. So he over there looking shocked, as usual, talking to Lindsay's dad, and he's asking for some advice, and her dad is like, just let her know that you have her back. He's like, you don't want Lindsay as an enemy. You all want that. So Mark said, you know, that family is very important to me. I don't have a dad. And so her dad was like, you know, my condolences. I heard that your dad passed away. And he said, I'm an only child, and I don't have anyone. I was like, oh, man. Every time I hear things like this, I am like I have got to get a sibling for my son like I just have to I cannot have him out here like Mark the shark all by himself when I'm gone oh child I just tugs at my heartstrings every time I hit it so then Mark asked her dad he said you know I really wanted to do this prior to getting married to someone I wanted to ask for their parents permission so the dad of course said yes and they take off our hands please so that was very special and sweet of Mark Alyssa and Chris Chris has given Alyssa more compliments yet again. I haven't heard one come from her mouth for him yet. And he asked her what made her do this. And she said, well, you know, I just dated everybody. So why not? So Chris is like, well, this could be the greatest love story ever. That's what he's saying in his confessional. Chris, you cannot read the room. This is definitely 
not the greatest love story ever no so they're clinking the glasses for them to kiss and she's like yeah i don't give in to peer pressure Alyssa, this is not an after school special with the school bully asking you to skip school girl it is a kiss so in his confessional he's like i hope i'm her type because holy crap she's beautiful well it doesn't matter if she's beautiful she's ugly on the inside so it really doesn't matter so she starts giving some bs about she goes with her gut instinct and she's like i've had a super long day and it's a very high stress situation i just don't know if i'll be chris's wife forever like we've only known each other for a couple of hours i need time to process this ladies just say you aren't attracted to chris and he's not your type girl gone jasmina and michael so the family start drinking and the glasses start clinking and they are supposed to kiss so he had a little bit of gum in his mouth, child, because he's trying to make sure he keeps that f breath, Mentos fresh when she gets ready to lean in. She was like, you chewing gum? He was like, I'm just trying to prepare myself, get myself together and whatnot. <laughs> so he leans in and they kiss. I don't want to hear not another glass being tapped on. Oh, child. So Michael said, you know, he's excited to get to know her. And he, he said that she's into things that he's not into, which is exciting because he gets to go a little bit into her world well that's good because that is that is at least telling me that he's open you know he's not so closed off like i don't want to watch a k-drama i don't want to watch tv i don't want the tv off i just want to go to sleep like it shows me that he's open to new things so then she asks him about his schedule and he tells her that he's up at 4 a.m he's out the door monday through friday home at seven she's like what about the weekends he was like well you know saturday and sunday you know i have about four clients it's a little bit sporadic michael when you gonna have time to spend with your wife that is a hectic schedule. Child, thank goodness for her K-dramas. So in her confessional, she said in her past relationships, she had a habit of being with people emotionally unavailable. She said she needs someone that's going to put her first. You better put that woman first. Shout out to Jaheen. <laughs> but to be fair to Michael, to be fair to him, he was working based on his singleness. Because, you know, when you're single, you ain't got nothing but time. You ain't got no kids. You ain't got no man or no woman. So you're just doing whatever you want to do. But I am pretty sure that now that he has Jasmina, because, baby, she seemed like she going to put her foot down on that schedule, okay? Going to be rearranging all them clients. Now that he has her, I think that he's going to rearrange his schedule and just adjust it a little bit to married life. You'll be fine, girl. Don't start tripping over the schedule, okay? Because we don't know if he's going to adjust or not. Now, if he refuses, then that's something different. Moving forward. All the couples are eating and they're eating cake. Let them eat cake. And Elijah Wan is super excited, child, because this one's a carrot cake. He's like, is that carrot cake? I love carrot cake. Elijah Wan, calm down. Boy gone. Oh, child, he gets so excited. <laughs> he gets so excited. So she's talking to his family and friends. So they're like, so what are you doing this summer? She said, I like hookah. I like to go to the cookouts. I like to do outlet. I like to just chill. So they're like, oh, okay, okay, you're going to fit in. So they're like, are you a club kind of lady? She said, no, I'm 30. Girl, okay. Charlotte's people that's 30 and up still getting club fees to show up, okay? And what else is going on? 30 still be going to the club as well, masking it as lounges now. Now, that's just my opinion. Because in my opinion, a lounge is the same as a club. Now, some people say it's different, but it's still people dancing and still some people sitting in sections and still some people drinking and smoking hookah. But maybe that's just me. But honey, I'm getting older, so I don't want no lounge. I don't want no club. I just want to sit down at a nice dinner and come home to my man and watch some TV. Child, that's it. That's all. So she's like, you know, I have a nine to five. I'm a retirement counselor for the state. And I was like, okay, girl, with the, with the distinguished title and whatnot. So she says, so are there any bad quirks about Elijah? First, okay, before you learn the quirks, I'm going to need you to know his name. And it is Elijah Wan. You were close. You just had to put the a one at the end. <laughs> oh, child. His friend said, they didn't want to correct her, but I peeped what his friend did. So his friend said, well, you may have to explain stuff to him like once or twice or three times to Elijah Wan. And he tried to make sure he emphasized that name. Like, girl, his name is not Elijah. Ooh, honey. He said, you have to tell him three or four times before he understands it. Oh, no, ma'am. Sounds like he's slow to comprehend. I do not have time to be repeating myself three, four, five, and six, seven times before you actually grasp the concept. Oh, no, uh-uh, honey, that wouldn't work for me. But, baby, that's why I'm not married at first sight. Moving forward. Over on the other side, Elijah Wan is over there talking to her mom. Baby, this scene right here was something else. So she's like, oh, oh, Elijah Wan? Child like mother like daughter. 
He's like, oh, Elijah Wan. She's like, who came up with that? My mom. Who came up with Katina? Oh, okay. He said, my mom, she's a small Irish lady and my dad's Nigerian. She's like, oh, okay, so your dad's Nigerian. He said, yeah. She said, so what are your intentions with my daughter? Baby, it's too late to ask all that, okay? They married at first sight. Clearly, your daughter didn't care about the intentions. She was willing to put her love life and the life in the hands of some strangers, so we're here. And when people ask that, it's crazy to me because it's like they're not going to sit in your face and say, my intent is to harm. My intent is to cheat on them and leave them in despair. Like, they're not going to say that. So stop asking what the intentions are, baby, and let the action show you what the intentions are. Oof. He said, you know, I have good intentions, but I want to know her. He said, I told her I have ADHD. She said, are you on meds? Lady, what? Now, let me just say this. I have my preconceived ideas about O, but asking if he's on medication, that's rude and tasteless. Now, that's my opinion. Why would you sit in this man's face and ask him if he's on medication? So then he starts going off on his Elijah Wan rant. And he's like, I only have two friends. And, you know, is the sky blue? I don't do funny business. I only do straight business. Is today Saturday? Oh, child, he is so tiring. Lord, he is tiring. <laughs> so as he's talking, she just looking. So he said, you know, I think Katrina is. She said, Katina, Katina. That's a pet peeve of mine. Like, take the R out. Well, honey, I'm sure it's a pet peeve of others when you can't pronounce their name at all. And at your big seasoned age, honey, I know you'd have heard the name Elijah Wan before. And I'm going to say this like I said on the last review. Hakeem Elijah Wan played for the Houston Rockets. Child, I'm done. <laughs> oh, child, this is a mess. So then this lady goes, oh, what is that, a rabbit? So Elijah Wan turns around because she didn't use the ADHD to his disadvantage. And he turns around and she leaves. Baby, I'm done. Oh, honey, this is too much. In the next scene, the couples are dancing the night away. All of the receptions are underway. Everybody dropping down and getting their eagle on, girl. So they're dropping it slow and picking it back up. Jasmina and Michael. So Jasmina is talking to Michael's sisters, right? And y'all know how I love the sisters. I have a soft spot for Michael's sisters. They have won me over. And they ain't switched up on me yet. So his sister tells her that their mom died in 2013 and that they're all wearing these breast cancer pins for their mom. So they presented her with the pin. When I tell y'all... The tears that welled up in my eyes on that one. I was like, okay, okay, sisters. I'm glad this y'all last seen because all this crying y'all be having me doing. Oh, child, this is too much. Like, I'm really trying not to get wrapped up. But during this scene, they almost had me invested. Almost. I was almost there. Like, I am rooting for them, but I just can't go all in. Because you never know how the tables might turn. So I can't say who's my fave and who's my least favorite. Because you know how things go moving forward so she took the pen and she was like i'm really honored that they're letting me into their family and she started to get teary-eyed as well and she was like oh i'm about to cry and the sister was like you know at first it was michael and the girls now it's gonna be the girls michael and michael's wife i was like y'all better accept her that's what i'm talking about over on the other side michael is talking to jasmina's parents and her mom says she's going to need you to be vulnerable and be a sensitive man but not too vulnerable so the dad was like, yeah, be strong, but don't bully her because then you're going to have to talk to me. I know that's right, daddy. Basically, they was trying to tell him, don't be no punk because she's going to walk all over you. But be just strong enough and just vulnerable enough that you can communicate. So the dad was like, well, you know what? Sometimes it's just best not to say nothing. So Mrs. Kimberly, who's her mom, she said, no, being quiet isn't good with Jasmina. If you communicate, then the two of you are going to be all right. Chris and Alyssa. Chris is talking to her mom. And he's like, did she say anything good about me? She said, um, child mom getting ready to fib. <laughs> so she said, well, when we danced, I said, I liked you. And she said, me too. Mom, is that the truth? Okay. Cause it, I don't think that's the truth. She does not like this man. Her mom might have a little lying problem, honey. And I'm just saying, he said, well, let's say she had a bad day. What can I do? She said, the best thing is just don't say anything to her. Like, just let her be. Let her rant, let her rave, and then you guys are going to be okay. Okay, so what I heard is he's supposed to completely ignore her until she calms down. It sounds like Alyssa probably ran off that ex, okay? He ain't just call her on his way home and tell her not to make that shrimp pasta. Something else is missing from that story, and she ain't fooling me. He said, oh, it's okay. I take orders very well. Chris, listen to me. I'm speaking directly to you, honey. I don't know if you're going to run across this review or not. I know you're happy that she's pretty, 
but that is not all that you should require. Don't let those cowboy boots walk all over you. I need to see Chris's exes because he seems like he'll put up with any old thing just to be with her because she's the prettiest girl he's ever encountered. That's what he's giving me. Moving forward. So she's over there with his groomsmen and they asked her first impression of him. She's like, um, I don't know. I just got a very kind vibe. I just really did. Like, I, I got a very kind vibe. Girl, you know what they mean. They mean look wise. Like you can't feel his kind vibe from you walking down the aisle. That's the best you could do. So his friend was like, well, you know, Chris is a teacher. So if he comes off condescending, he's just trying to teach you. Then his other friend was like, oh, yeah, if Chris comes down on you, it's not that he's trying to be hard on you. It's just how he is. Y'all, please stop. Why would you tell this woman that you've just met, that just married one of your best friends, that he's a condescending prick? Why would you tell her that? She already doesn't like him. What kind of friends just start spewing out all of the negative attributes? Child, this is a whole fool. That was just one more thing. She's like, well, I don't know how I could put up with that behavior. See, that's all she needed. Moving forward. So they're having a blast and Elijah Wan is giving Katina a lap dance. Meanwhile, Katina's mom is over there with her face frowned up. She does not like Elijah Wan. She does not like him. Sir, you can't be pulling all your clothes off in front of the parentals. Oh, he loves to show out. On the other side, Lindsay is talking to Mark the Shark's friend. And she's like, yeah, he told me they call him Mark the Shark. And so his friend was like, well, that's the only way that I know him. She's like, Mark the Shark? So is he going to be under the covers like, dun, 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 dun. You know, she starts making a little shark noise or whatever. You know how when you got to jump out of the water because the shark about to bite you. Child, not the shark in the water noises. <laughs> Lindsay is like, well, his ring was big, so that's good. Lindsay gives me Anna Nicole Smith vibes. Like, I picture her with an older man just flashing her boobs, taking his credit card and going down to the Red Lobster. That's exactly what Lindsay gives me. Moving forward. In the next scene, Chris is talking to Alyssa's friends and he's like, so, does she like me? They're like, well, you know, uh, she doesn't usually go for nice guys, so you're out of her comfort zone. Basically, she likes D-bags. He's like, well, you know, you guys have seen my friends and I also have an edge to me like that. So, I mean, I, I can do that too. So you want to be a D-bag, got it. So her friends were like, well, um, she better like you. I mean, what's not to like? We like you. Somebody please reassure Chris so he can stop asking every five minutes, everyone he sees if this lady likes him. No, she doesn't, Chris. She doesn't like you like that. And why don't you ask her? Oh, child, this is just a mess. He's trying to conform to fit what she wants, honey. She wants a douchebag, so he wants to be a douchebag. He's letting the friends know he could give some douchebaggery. It's a fool. Steve and Noy. So Steve is talking to Noy's brother, right? He's like, so what are you doing tonight? <laughs> Steve is like, you mean tonight in the room? Well, I just met her. Like, I want to pace things, get to know her. He's like, I think we're just going to have some conversation. That's it. Go to bed and wake up Mary. So her brother was like, so nothing's going to happen tonight. Uh, brother, slow down, low down. Why are you trying to force him into the sexuals? He's like, I don't think so. So her brother's like, it's okay either way. I mean, you're married, you're legally married. Like, don't be like, no, I can't kiss you. Cause she's not the chaser. Okay. She likes to be chased. And if you don't chase her, then somebody else will. Brother, stay in your lane and out of married people's business. He can move at his own pace. Is he married to you or is he married to Noy? Katina and Elijah Wan. So she's talking to her girls. She's like, I'm married. I'm Mrs. Dickerson. So her friend was like, well, speaking of Dickerson, <laughs> he got a lot of body, yaddy, 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 yaddy. She's like, yeah, oh, I can't wait to see all his tattoos, but we're not having no sex tonight. Sure you aren't. Okay, Sure. I think he might find her boring in bed. I'm just saying. Because remember the bachelorette party? She was like, I'm not into all that. Meanwhile, he was over there hoping that she'll smack one of the strippers behind. Remember that? It seems like he's into a little bit more. And she's into nothing but laying there. Missionary style. So she's like, you know, I'm going to wait for like a month. Okay, let's see how that works. Meanwhile, he's over there with his boys and his brother. And he's like, she's beautiful. And she petite too? They're like, so you getting laid tonight? He said, if she let me, you know, that's why I held her up and put that thing on her leg. Ugh. Okay, it's giving gross. Okay, it's giving gross. So her friend is like, so what you think he gonna do? I think he aims to please. I think he gonna really wanna please you. He gonna put his face in it. They ready for her to lay her wig down and put that thing down on Isaac. Moving forward. Lindsay is still drunk on the way to the hotel. 
Jasmine is in her confessional. She's like, your girl is off the market. So then she says, even better is knowing that I feel like I'm something that he asked for. So that makes me feel even better about it. Oh, okay. So maybe she is feeling him. Jasmina is hard to read. She's tough to read. It's like, I think she likes Michael and I think she's content with her match. But at the same time, I don't know if she is all the way. So I just have to wait. Chris and Alyssa. Of course we hear from Chris because why? Alyssa ain't saying nothing. So he's happy and she's giving absolutely nothing. They didn't even hold hands coming out. Everybody else were hold, was holding hands coming out, you know, going to their car service so they can go to their destination. Not these two. She walking out and he's tagging behind her. Experts, I'm speaking directly to you. Why do you have to humiliate somebody every season? Why? Chris does not deserve an Alyssa. Ugh, it's just disgusting. Noi and Steve. She was like, you know, this could be the start of something special. Elijah Wan and Katina. So they're in their car service, right? And he's like, I would like to thank the experts because without them, I would have never met this great and wonderful woman. Elijah Wan, slow down. You just do too much. You don't even know her yet. Ugh. So the couples get to their suites, right? And I'm happy that the men are all carrying the women over the threshold. But I only counted four couples. Okay? Keep that in mind. Child, they got all these roses still on the bed, but white this time because they know those red ones stain those duvets. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> That's my business. Steve and Noy. So he's helping her undress, but what he's really thinking about is that bed, honey. That's what he really eyeing because it's been a while. And Steve said it's been times today that he's thought about the sexuals. You know, she look at him a certain way, but really and truly it's no rush. Well, can we at least rush to a shower? I have not ever understood how they go through an entire day of filming an entire day of being married and you're with a stranger and you just go change and put on your night clothes and get in the bed absolutely not that is so disgusting but honey ain't nothing more disgusting than what i'm about to get into as we get into lindsay and mark they get to the room and she's like let me wash my face you know i'll go back to nude once i'm comfortable with him but for now it's pj's so you were comfortable enough to give the cameraman a sneak peek of your boobs, but not Mark the shark. Girl, stop. She's like, he's a stranger. Lindsay, all day you have talked about nothing but sexual things. All that sexual talk, now he's a stranger. You said you weren't going to be wearing no underwear. You said you can't wait to see what he's working with. You said, is he going to be under the covers, like really coming in like a shark? Lindsay is a piece of work, child. I guess it's her sobering up or whatever's happening. But this is going to be a long 16 weeks. Jasmina and Michael they get to the room and she's like oh the roses I have never had anyone do anything like this for me before like ever he's like really and you know what that really broke my heart that's why you can't judge a book by its cover because you would think somebody as, as attractive as her would have had things like that but no child these men be for the streets so then he hands her this rose I thought that was so sweet I was like that is so sweet so she's like here you go and she hands him one back <laughs> I was like, look at them. I had to catch myself because again, they trying to wrap me up. No, 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 no. Ain't gonna happen, Captain. This is cute. I ain't gonna lie. But I am not giving in just yet. He said that he likes that Jasmina doesn't take herself too serious. I like their banter. I'm not gonna lie. I love the banter between the two of them so far. Let's see if they can keep it up. Katina and Elijah Wan. So he's helping her undress, right? And she's like, no, I'm not nervous to be naked in front of my now husband because, you know, he has to accept me for what I am, flaws and all. She's saying this in the restroom, right? Meanwhile, oh, funky Elijah Wan is draped across the bed in these drawers with this huge stain on them. He's obviously not worried about being naked. So what is this gross stain? When I saw them draw, see, I knew you were full of sh okay? <laughs> Baby, them draws speak volumes. Didn't your mama ever tell you do not leave the house without clean underwear on in case you get into an accident? I guess she should have told you don't leave the house without clean drawers on in case you get married at first sight. Boy, you're too big and grown to have them dirty drawers on. And the position of the stain is very peculiar. Like you knew you were coming on TV. Why didn't you purchase some wet night TV drawers? Just yuck. <laughs> tried to ignore it y'all i was like baby these draws like ew moving forward 
So Katina is in the restroom and she's trying to wrap up this wig. Girl, you gonna hurt your neck sleeping with that wig on. That big heavy wig. <laughs> Him and them draws, you and that wig. Baby, it's a whole fool. Steve and Noy. They're very cute to me and they're cuddling up together, getting ready to go night night. Lindsay and Mark, they're having fun with the roses. Katina and Elijah Wan, child, we back over here. They get to kissing and cuddling. I hope she don't see them draws. Moving forward, Jasmina and Michael. She's like, you want to cuddle? He said, of course. He said, what good is having a wife if you can't cuddle her? I know that's right, baby. Y'all better get cozy. So then there's Alyssa and Chris. He's sitting there, y'all. Still optimistic. He's smiling. He's talking to the producers. Now, production is aware that Alyssa is acting up. But Chris is unaware. So he's like, what's going on? So we hear Alyssa saying she hates the kind of people that are pushy and condescending. She's like, his friends told me that. His friends told me that's what he does. Sounds like a moment of reflection to me because the only person I see condescending and pushy would be you. I knew she was going to take that and run with it. I knew when those friends told her that, that that was going to be the driving and deciding factor of her not giving Chris a chance. I knew it. She said, you know, we were in the elevator and Chris said, oh, I'm her side piece. And that makes me sick. Like it's immature. No, what's immature is you creating problems where there are none because you aren't physically attracted to him. You are immature. She's like, you know, he would normally be my type. Then just say that. Just say that to him. You would normally be my type. So then she starts crying. Are you really fixing your face to cry? She's like, I don't want to share a room with him. I don't. Like physically, I don't see one characteristic in him that I asked for. Well, you know what is very easy to change? Your physical attributes. There was even a show that came out like years ago where they would completely transform a person to look like someone unrecognizable. Celebrities do it all the time. But what you cannot change is how crappy of a person you are on the inside. That will never change. You little wicked witch of the West. Moving forward. I was fighting mad they had Chris waiting on her outside there like that. I did not like that. So she's like, what do I do? So the producer is like, well, you need to talk to Chris because he has no idea what's happening. So she comes out, right? And she's like, first of all, I want to apologize for keeping you waiting. She's like, here's the thing. Okay, here's the thing that didn't sit right with me. He's like, I'm sorry if I did anything. She's like, let's just get some sleep. He said, anything you want to know? She said, no, not right now. And gets up and walks away. We're going to continue this conversation on our live on tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. And that was the end of the episode. From Elijah Wan's dirty draws. I don't think that's what they mean when they say, I love his dirty draw. <laughs> From Elijah Wan's dirty draws to Alyssa's dirty attitude. And the way that the producers and the experts did Chris dirty, this episode was all about the dirty. Y'all y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what y'all thought about the episode. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Meet me tomorrow night or tonight, which is Thursday. It's going to be Thursday, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, and we are going to discuss all things Married at First Sight. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.